Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? It's good to be able to gather today and to be able to worship. So let us continue to worship, uh, lifting our hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray. Immortal God, who has guided us through generations of faithful followers, we praise you with our hearts and seek you with all that we are. We know that you have breathed life into each of us. Your words have brought life all around us. You have spoken and the material world took form. You speak and your words bring light to our lives and bless us with hope to face monotony and stresses and to receive joys that are to be shared. Lord, we are incredibly blessed to be known as yours and to be loved in our imperfections, and to be made whole in and through you. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. The choir is, will bless us with a, a, a choir anthem. It's a hymn called Here, Now, Now the Name.
Let us continue to pray. Imminent and loving God, we owe you everything that we have. Yet we try to steal from you. We try to push you out of our hearts because of our busyness. We find it hard to give to you and still be able to balance everything else that we have in our lives. The stuff becomes more important than our relationship with you. We struggle to rationalize our choices and too often we rationalize leaving you out because you are loving and graceful. And then we wonder why we struggle to love and give and receive grace. Forgive us for the choices that we make that forget about you. Forgive us for not honoring you with our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. All that we have comes from you. Lord, help us to prioritize our lives so that we would not forget about who and what is truly important. We pray this in the bondage-breaking, grace-giving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Faithful sisters and brothers in Christ, we have been forgiven of our sins, and we are freed to live in the fullness of God's grace and to live in the life that Jesus has blessed us with. Paul reminds us of this truth in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 16. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit are God, are of God, are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father, for his Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. I invite us to join our voices together as we sing, Great is thy faithfulness.
Can the science school come forward, please? Let us come before the Lord in prayer once again. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we turn to your living word that speaks into our hearts and brings hope into our hurting and broken lives. Help us to listen to and receive your word so that we can, be, that we can flourish on the path of life. 
May your Holy Spirit prepare us for the gift that for the gift that you are giving. Lord Jesus, we pray this in your name. Amen. I'd like to invite Amber to come forward today to the scripture readings. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and stri strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry, Glory. The Lord sits upon all the gold of the flood. The Lord is strong and his king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Seventeen. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those who have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in the presence of the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out, out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you, for I have for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the wor world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name and the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say that say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. For they are not the world, for they are not of the world anymore than I am of the, than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from, from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me to the world, I have sent them to the world. For them I sanctify myself, and they too may be truly sanctified. Jesus prays for all believers. 
My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that I am that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me and they may be one as we are one in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and I and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory that you have given me because you loved me be before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Thank you, Andrew. I invite us to join our voices together as we sing hymn 292, Father, I adore you. John 17 is a uh, chapter filled with a great deal of, of, of meat for us to chew on. Uh, we could be here all day. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. We could be here for, for a long, long time. We're not going to be here all day, don't worry. I just want to see people's reaction. <laughs> as the stress level just rose. Um, but as we look through this, we see Jesus doing something that many times we, we don't always realize that Jesus has done. We, sometimes we skip over this practice, but Jesus took a great deal of time through his ministry to pray. We focus a lot of the times on the miracles that he has done, on the, 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 the things that are... That are tangible, life-changing events. And yet this prayer is a prayer that, when we look at it, there, there's a great deal of depth that we should be looking at and modeling in our own prayer life. The first part is, is Jesus coming to the Lord and recognizing, and we recognizing and admitting to his need and that he is giving, giving to the world what God had given to him. That it is about God's glory and not his own. When we think about prayer, we start off by looking and praising God for what he has done. For all the work that he has done, for who God is. And in the beginning of this prayer, we also start to see the interconnectedness of Jesus with the Heavenly Father. We see the strength that that has, has had during Jesus' ministry and that is still going to have 
as Jesus approaches um, Calvary. In the other Gospels, we hear a prayer that Jesus prays to God. It's very simple. It's, it's, very, it's incredibly short. And in many ways, it is a summary of this prayer. We remember, we can almost quote it by, by memory. And it says, as Jesus prays to God, that as the cup approaches, that if this cup could pass before me, but not my will be done, but yours. And we see that interconnectedness. We see that willingness of Jesus to follow in God's will, to live out God's will. And we see the strength that, has, that Jesus has as he is living out, as he is ministering, that that interconnectedness, that focus on giving God the glory, of trusting God, and following what God has, has for Jesus. And how that ministry touched lives. And then he's praying, then Jesus moves on to pray for his disciples. People that God had given to them, that God, the Heavenly Father, had given to Jesus. And we have to remember, this is a different focus than, than sometimes we're used to. Because we see Jesus calling. He goes out and calls Peter and Andrew. He goes out and calls John and James. He goes out and calls Matthew. He goes out and calls the rest of the disciples. But Jesus sees them as gifts. Gifts that God, that God the Heavenly Father has given. That they're not just people chosen. They're people that are gifts. People that are important. People that God has seen. But the Heavenly Father knows and has given into the care of Jesus Christ. These are people that Jesus has ministered with, has laughed with, has cried with. These are people that Jesus has taught and rebuked. These are people that Jesus would return to. These are people that have seen the miracles of Je that Jesus had done. And their lives were forever changed. And Jesus prays for them that they would be, have that same interconnectedness with himself as he is interconnected with our, our Heavenly Father. That there wouldn't be any separation, but that strength that had been present in Jesus, that reliance on God the Father would still be present and passed down in and through Jesus, through the disciples, that there would be a long line of strength and of power, of, of, of community. That it wasn't just about that, that time and that space, that if Jesus was physically present, but that the disciples would be continuing on with Jesus, with the teachings of Jesus, with Jesus' Holy Spirit, drawing them closer, strengthening the bonds that cannot be broken. And Jesus does, does something that many of us would wish he didn't, actually. He prays a prayer not to take them out of the world. So in other words, how many of us wish that Jesus would have just snapped his fingers and there'd be no more problems, no more evil, no more sickness, no more broken relationships, no more death. That snap would make our lives so much easier. Wouldn't it? And yet that would have been the most forceful thing that God had done. And that would actually take away the love that he has. We're not, God's love is not being forced on. We are being given the opportunity to choose. To choose God's grace, God's hope, God's, God's forgiveness. And here we see, God, Jesus doesn't pray for an easy life for the disciples. Conversely, that means we're not going to be living an easy life. Jesus doesn't pray that the disciples will be taken out of the world. Jesus knows the brokenness of the world. And he is at work healing that brokenness. And that brokenness 
is going to be confronted by the grace and love-filled message of Jesus through the disciples. Through the disciples who are continuing to share that gift in spite of all the problems that they will face. Jesus knows that they will face problems. Jesus knows that, there will not, that their road will not be an easy road. But again, he is praying for them that they would experience that connectedness, that joy, that hope, that no matter what they face, they would not be alone. There is a psalm in, in the, in the, in, that we read and that most of us probably could recite by memory. It might be a slightly different translation. But Psalm 23. Psalm 23, we, we read it and we hear it and we think that this is a very beautiful, peaceful psalm. It is reassuring. And yet this psalm was written by King David, who during the time when he was, when he was writing it, was experiencing horrible loneliness. He was having to leave his home, his safety. He was, he was being hunted down by the king, King Saul at the time. He was made an outlaw. He had to experience the, the, the depth of Saul's hatred and his brokenness and his envy and his pride. And yet through all of this, David has that beautiful connection with God that no matter what he's facing, no matter the struggles that he is enduring, the struggles aren't going to overcome him. But he is bringing the full power of God's grace and the full relationship that he has with God into those situations. And this is the same idea that Jesus is praying into the disciples' prayer, into the disciples' lives, that they would have that interconnectedness have that power, have that relationship that no matter whether they were out on the street preaching or in the jails, because we read about them being arrested, facing persecution, even facing death, that no matter what they faced, they would have that relationship with God that they would make it through, that the, the problems would not overcome them But that they would rest and live in the certainty of God's holy presence. And then Jesus does something that is somewhat unexpected. And it's something that, as we look at these prayers, and as, as I... I encourage us to follow in Jesus' leading. Because what Jesus does, he says these words, my prayer is not for them alone, not just for the disciples, not just for the people that, that we've been reading about, not just for the people that Jesus called and that were given into, into that group, into do wonderful acts of, of ministry, but my prayer, and I pray also for those who will believe, in me through their message. The message that has been passed down from generation to generation. From mothers and fathers to, to sons and daughters. A message that has been shared between sisters and brothers, between aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews, between neighbors and friends. The message of Jesus Christ, the message of God's love for us, the message of His forgiveness for each of us. It's a message of hope. Jesus is praying for each of us here today. He is praying for, for those we know and for those we have no clue about. Because our minds are, are limited, that's a reality. We may have X number of friends on Facebook, but there's billions of people out there. And not everyone's on Facebook or Instagram, or all those other social media that we can, we, can, we can go to and we can share on. But we are all brothers and sisters that Jesus has prayed for. 
that Jesus loves dearly, that Jesus has opened the door for. It is that prayer of expectation. Now, the message is not limited to a time and space. It is a message that will endure long past the disciples. We are evidence of that. Long past ourselves. It is a message that will transform lives and has transformed the world and will continue to transform the world if we're willing to share it. The interesting thing about it is it's also not just limited to us. As I mentioned, Jesus was praying for people that we may never meet and also for those that we love dearly. It is a message of God's grace and God's hope. A message that can change the heart of a wandering soul. That can bring wholeness to the broken. That can bring life to those who struggle to see any hope in life. It can bring a smile to the face of the downtrodden. It can lift up even the heaviest of hearts. This is the message that God has brought to us through Jesus Christ. This is the message of God's unity working in us, bringing us together. That we are not alone. That we are not forgotten. That no matter what we endure, no matter what, what we face, that we are together with Jesus. And that God's glory will be seen in and through all that we do when we are working with Christ. That God's glory brings us together in that place of peace, that place of hope, that place of reconciliation. So my friends, may we give God thanks and praise for all that he has done in and through us, like Jesus did. May we pray for each other. Pray for boldness in times of struggle. May we pray for healing to those who are hurting and grieving. May we remind each other of the hope that we have. And may we do what we sometimes struggle to do. May we pray for those who are to come. Those who will do things sometimes differently than us. Many times better than us. May we pray that God would equip them. That they would know that they are dearly loved. It is amazing to hear the prayers of those who have written them down, who have shared them, praying for people that are not yet born, but God has already prepared a place for. May we continue to pray to God, trusting Him, to lead us through the dangers and toils and snares, to lead, him, lead us in the unity. May we trust and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for the gift that you are giving and have given. We thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Word that guides us and that reminds us of the work of Christ. Lord, we thank you for your holy word that points out what your Holy Spirit is doing, that we might have eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you are doing and all that you will do. Lord, we thank you for our brothers and sisters here in this sanctuary. We thank you for, for young and for young at heart. We thank you for 
those who are gifted in hospitality and those who are gifted prayer warriors. We are thankful for those who, who bless us with music, for those who share your word, for those who remind us to smile and share tears with us. Lord, we thank you for people who share life together, for those who are present. And Lord, we pray for those who will come, come after us. Lord, we pray that, that we would trust you, trust you to lead, to guide us, to work within us. Lord, we pray for, for the grieving hearts today. We pray for, for the families of the young woman who has died. Lord, we pray for the friends at, at North Dundas who are grieving, grieving the death of a loved friend. Lord, we don't under, always understand the whys. Lord, at times we struggle with, with tragedies such as these, any tragedy really. Lord, we know that in you we can find comfort and peace. In you we can bring our anger and our questions. In you we can wrestle with our fears and know that you, you are bigger than all of them. That you do not turn us away, but you welcome us in and embrace us that we can be weak because you are strong. Lord, we, we pray that you would continue to guide us, that your Holy Spirit would lead us to do the ministry that you have for us. Lord, we, we pray for the sports camp that is coming up. Lord, we pray for the campers, for volunteers. Lord, we pray for the coaches that will be coming. Lord, we pray that your will will be done, that your good news will be shared, and that your love would be experienced. Lord, we pray, we pray for those who will be sharing your message. May you grant them your peace, clarity of mind. May their passion for you come through clearly. Lord, give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, <coughs> minds to comprehend. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, peace in our relationships, healing, Lord, to those that are broken, strengthening for those that are stressed. Lord, we pray for peace in our communities, in our schools, on our sports fields. We pray for peace and wisdom for our leaders, both locally and around the world. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus Christ's name. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our mission moment this morning. Aziza, a mother of four from Pakistan, faced numerous challenges, including a physical disability and the tragic loss of her husband in 2019. Left to support her family as a young widow, Aziza and her eldest son worked tirelessly. Her son earned a small income as a shepherd. Despite their best efforts, the devastating floods of 2022 destroyed their home and village, forcing them to seek refuge in her brother-in-law's house. Aziza struggled to feed her children. In response to the disaster, a local partner with support from PWSD and Canadian Food Grains Bank Began, to, began a cash assistance program to ensure families could meet their basic food needs. Aziza used the funds wisely, allocating from, the, from them for immediate needs 
like wheat flour and groceries. Our faithful God has given us opportunities to give and to serve. As we do these, we are able to be part of what God's work it, it is in this world. Let us join with God and give our tithes and our offerings.
us to live for you and to share your grace and love in all in our community and around the world. Send us to be your hands and feet and to shine with your light. Send us in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank <laughs> you.